Hi, I'm Beth Quinn. I'm a senior research scientist with the National Center for Women in Information Technology, or NCWIT. Uh, in this video, I'd like to introduce you to the main elements of how and why to recruit strategically. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the topic of strategic recruiting. But your main source of information for this module is the NCWIT strategic um, recruitment workbook pictured here in this slide. You'll find a link to it under the readings on the course page. You can also find it on NCWIT's website under resources. So my real goal in this video is to make the case for strategic planning. Sometimes you're really busy, strategic planning can seem like a lot of work. Sometimes you just wanna get moving and you just wanna get stuff done. My goal is to convince you that building a strategic recruiting plan is completely worth the effort. But before we dive in, and it's related to that main goal, is let me explain NCWIT's approach to recruiting. We know that many of you are doing this broadening particip participation work as, a, as an add-on to your jobs as a faculty member or a staff member you don't have a lot of time. So we've designed our um, recommendations based on these goals, which is to give you the greatest return on investment in the shortest amount of time to bring real results with the smallest resource commitment. Taking this kind of low hanging fruit approach is really important or especially in important when you are first beginning to recruit strategically. So let's look at an overview of the recruiting module. So these are the, this is all the things that we were, we're going to be talking about in this particular module. Uh, in this video, we'll talk about the first element being strategic. But in subsequent uh, videos, we'll discuss uh, identifying target audience, like who are you trying to reach? Messaging for diversity. So how do you craft messages that will be effective um, in reaching that target audience and their influencers? And then finally, uh, you don't have a lot of time. So you don't want to do this all on your own. Um, so we have some strategies for how you can leverage existing assets, existing programs, and others to help you in this really important work. But first, why recruit when your program may be over-enrolled? That's the elephant in the room before we start any discussion of recruiting in today's context. So let's look at some data. And we've, we've covered this in previous module, but it's, it's totally worth looking at again. So since 1987, computing has seen its, its lulls, its valleys, and its peaks but it's looking like the rise in the number of students getting computing degrees is unlikely to diminish. The bad news is that women's relative proportion of these degrees has actually diminished, particularly at the associate's and the bachelor's degree levels. The orange line is the associate's degree and the bachelor's um, degrees are represented by the blue line. And here's an interesting, peculiar, and kind of problematic um, thing is that computing is an anomaly among the STEM fields. Women's relative proportion in biology and chemistry, which you can see in the orange line and in the purple line, has increased quite dramatically over the last several decades. But women's participation in computing has actually decreased or started to decrease in the early 90s. So even as the demand for computing majors increases, given gendered stereo and racial stereotypes that have developed um, around computing fields, there's no guarantee that the representation of women and underrepresented minorities in CS will improve without a focused effort. 
Retention is always a challenge and adverse conditions associated with high demands for courses, as well as the actions taken by institutions in order to manage these enrollments could negatively impact the inclusiveness of undergraduate programs of computing. Thus, having a plan, a strategic plan for recruiting women and other groups that have been underrepresented may be more important now than ever. So for the remainder of this video, let's talk about being strategic. Most academic departments have outreach efforts to inform potential students and their influencers about their programs. Most participate in recruiting events and produce materials that say something about their programs and, and everybody has a website. But this is what these initiatives can often look like in the absence of strategic planning. So most common, the goals of the initiative, what you're trying to achieve are simply out of focus. What often happens is there's a chance awareness that an event will occur and chance availability that someone uh, can attend or someone uh, comes across a funding solicitation and throws something together. But what you're trying to achieve is never actually brought into focus. Others are just too far off in the distance to have much of an effect on your program. So for example, a middle school uh, computing workshop for girls. Now that is a great service activity for your faculty, but it is unlikely to impact the enrollment of women in your program in the short term. Think of the number of years uh, between that middle school girl and when she enrolls in college and think of all the other influences that will happen uh, in between that workshop and when she decides on the college. And then some are simply too distant and too unclear. But here's the really, I find really interesting one. There are opportunities that are in focus. You know exactly why you wanna do it. And they're at the right distance in terms of giving you results quickly. But you and your program are not positioned right to hit the mark. So let me get, give you an example. There's a recruiting day for high school students at your college, but your department doesn't have inclusive marketing materials to hand out at that event, or you learned about it too late and, and you can't send the right person uh, to the end event. So what's the implication? What's the problem? When goals are out of focus or out of range or you're out of position, you're unlikely to hit the mark. And all of these initiatives take resources, time, money, energy, facilities, goodwill, even precious political capital. Without strategic planning, your return on investment is likely to be low but more troubling is that you may appear to be doing a lot and expending a lot of resources, but when the results don't appear, critics might say, there's nothing to be done. Look at all the stuff we've done with no results. And your allies might simply be burned out. Bottom line, an opportunistic haphazard approach rarely results in sustainable programs that have real impact and they may create unintended consequences. And if that happens, why are you doing it? So let's look at the elements of what a strategic plan looks like. The first element is you wanna create a shared vision. Now, sometimes the notion of vision is kind of squishy and woo-woo, and what does that really mean? And um, you may have been uh, participated in a bad uh, strategic planning session or shared visioning session. But ideally, uh, creating a shared vision is how you recruit and motivate others. It's how you position yourself for funding and other support. And going through a planning process where a vision is truly collaboratively created can increase participants' commitment to the project. It can also help you organize your work together. Another way to put this and to really badly mix my metaphor is that when you have a shared vision, 
it means you're more likely to be dancing to the same music and keeping the same time. And when you're trying to coordinate efforts, that's super important. Now, sometimes this vision may include numeric or quantitative goals, and, and that's awesome. So for example, increase the enrollment of women by 50% in four years. Uh, great, it's specific, it's actionable, but great visions are often more than that. They have a qualitative, I might even say inspirational aspect to them. So for example, we will create an inclusive, creative culture that supports a diverse population of faculty, staff, and students. And from that vision, you can set achievable goals. Often collecting some data can help you identify what those might be. And let me give you an example. So one program that NCWIT has worked with, a computing program, has spent a lot of resources on an awards program for high school women. To find out if this and other initiatives were having an effect, they simply surveyed their intro students, the, the students in their intro courses. And they asked among other things, well, what high school did you go to? And uh, which of these outreach activities did you participate in? What did they find? None of the students in their intro computing courses had participated in that awards program, none. On the other hand, what they did find was that one high school was sending a disproportionate amount of students to their program. So they pivoted based on that survey and they set a goal to work with that high school to help them increase the proportion of women enrolled in their high school courses. So the goal is to increase the percentage of women in those high school courses and then recruit them to their computing program. Strategic planning uh, also often has an element of thinking systemically, uh, considering a set of initiatives that work in coordination with each other in kind of a recruiting ecosystem. So uh, keeping with that last example, it might make sense then to develop a set of uh, welcoming events for students from your feeder high school so that all these students can make the connection between their high school computing courses and studying computing at your college. And obviously from that last example, the notion that tracking metrics to determine what works and what doesn't is amazingly helpful. NCWIT has a lot of resources that can help you with uh, tracking these metrics, uh, including surveys that you can use in intro courses. So I hope that you're now convinced that strategic planning is well worth the effort. In subsequent sections of this module, we'll dig into the how of creating a strategic uh, recruiting plan. The workbook I referenced earlier uh, and pictured here in this slide, it really is your, your golden resource for this process. It has background information, guiding questions uh, to help you identify appropriate goals, and uh, several templates to help guide your process. So I hope this has been helpful. And thank you for listening.